everybody. Welcome to this first part of the series, and thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is going to be the first real part. We did the intro yesterday, and I hope I was clear uh, in my intention that this will be a multi-part video series. But the project is mostly done, and I will put the GitHub repo down below. You can go ahead and get the code. Uh, the idea here in this series, and it's a little different, definitely different for me, is that you don't have to watch any of the videos uh, except for maybe this one because this one we're going to hook in the Firebase project. Uh, if you actually run the repo, it does error because it's searching for the Firebase configuration. But once we've had that in, uh, you should be able to tune into videos in any order you want and you don't have to watch them all. So, for example, we may do the external setup for Apple sign-in in a video and if you're not interested in the Apple sign-in, you can pick up in the next one where we do the Facebook sign-in and just focus on that and ignore the Apple sign-in. So that's the idea. Hopefully it works. Could turn out to be bloody shambles. I was trying to do a great explanation of it, and I had done one take yesterday. I was in the middle of a second take, which I think was going a little bit better, when the puppy, who you may have noticed was behind me, found a piece of a deer leg. The older dogs took it away. The puppy started howling in protest. I had to stop arbitrate the whole dispute. It was a whole ordeal, but we got that straightened out. We've got the GitHub repo up. Go ahead and get it. Link is down below, and let's go ahead and get started connecting that Flutter project called Authy with a Firebase project. All right, so I have uh, cloned the repo, and I have gone ahead and run Flutter Pub Get to update my packages. Uh, I did start using IntelliJ around Christmas uh, for uh, another reason, uh, and I, I really liked it, and so I've been using it for a couple weeks now. Uh, if you find this distracting, I know a lot of you are on Visual Studio Code, and I'm still bouncing back and forth, let me know, um, and I can definitely switch back to, to VS Code. Uh, so I did run this, I've got an Apple, uh, an iOS emulator up here, and I get this error here about missing the Google services info. If you tried to run it on Android, you get uh, a little different error message. So this won't run, obviously, without the Firebase configuration, so we do need to add that. So I'm going to go to consolefirebase.google.com, and a lot of the setup is already done. So for instance, the initialization of the app is already done here. The setup of Gradle is already done uh, in the repo. If you're starting a new project from scratch, I'll go ahead and put a video link up above that walks you through the whole process. Uh, but for these purposes, or for this app, we just need to create the configuration file and drop those in. So on my console, I'm going to go ahead and add a new project. And I'll name it whatever I want. I will hit continue. I'm not going to enable Google Analytics, so we'll just create the project. Now, while that runs in uh, pubspec.yaml, I included in here in the dev dependencies a uh, package for changing the package name on the Android app, uh, which I have never used. So we're going to go ahead and use it here uh, for the first time and see how it works. The, the package name right now is com.julo.authy, and I don't actually think it's required in Android in any of this setup that it be different. Definitely going to have to be different for Apple sign-in on the iOS side because that is communicating to the Apple server by the package name or the bundle ID as they call it. Um, and if you try to use the same uh, bundle ID as I did when I created the source code for this, then you're going to get a rejection. So we might as well just go ahead and change it. So just checking out this package name here. Um, we've already got the dependency. We've already run flutterpub.get. So I'm going to go to the terminal and let me slide this over here. And what looks like what I need to do is flutterpub run change underscore app package underscore name colon main and then com or whatever your uh, domain is, your backwards domain is. I'm going to do Julo again, and I'm going to do Authy2 for mine. So do something different than I do here, just something that is unique to you. And for all I know that works, I'm just going to take a look here. I'm going to take a peek in Android app 
SRC main Android manifest. And okay, I can see my package name here, which is uh, one of the places where it should have been changed, and it was. So that's good. So with that in place, I am going to go back to my Firebase console. So I'm going to shrink this up a little bit. It's all set, so I'm going to hit continue, and I'm going to go into my project. And I want to add an app, so I'm going to start with the Android app. I'm just going to click the Android here, and it wants my package name. And so, oh boy, I could navigate back. To, oh, there it is right there, that Android manifest. I'll just copy it right out of there, or if you remember what it is, you can just type it in there. Optional nickname, I will skip. I am going to do a debugging signing certificate SHA-1 option because we are going to do Google sign-in. Um, and I think phone, yeah, okay, phone, phone uh, sign-in as well requires it. So we do want to do that. Um, I can click this question mark here. It will say, see this page. And it's going to ask me to use a key tool. Key tool is a Java tool, so make sure you actually have Java on your machine installed. Or when you type in key tool, it will say command not recognized. But what I want to do is I want to put in one of these commands here. So this here, key tool list, this is for Mac Linux or Windows, depending on which system I'm in. So I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to copy this, paste it run it it will ask me for a password the password word is Android and I'm gonna get a SHA-1 fingerprint right here which I'll copy and we can take this back drop it right in there register app and we're all set it'll take us to another screen and all we have to do now is download this Google services JSON like that. Open that up in Explorer or Finder. Make sure that the uh, a one or a two hasn't been appended to it. In other words, make sure it was the only thing in your download folder when you downloaded it. it needs to have this naming convention, google-services.json.com. And we are gonna drop that right in Android app. And that should complete our Android setup. Then for iOS, we want to open up the iOS folder and go to runner Xcode project uh, in an Explorer window. So they have a nice little snazzy tool to do that in IntelliJ, but I'm going to go ahead and do it separately. I'll open up Xcode and I'm going to open a new project or file. I'm going to navigate to it. Go to my iOS folder. I'm going to look for this Xcode proj. Now I'm going to click here on my runner and this is going to give me my bundle identifier right here. So you can see that it's still the old one because the package that we used only changes Android because that is a real pain. Uh, for iOS, all you got to do is change it here. So whatever you want to put in here doesn't have to be identical to your Android. Um, it's just going to have to match what you put into your Firebase configuration. So I'm going to call it that. Copy that for later. Go back to my Firebase console. We can get off of this page. We have our Android app now. So I'm going to add another app and I'm going to add an iOS app. Put my bundle ID right here. There is a, an optional field for the nickname. There's an optional field for the App Store. I'm not going to worry about either one of those. I'm just going to hit register. That's going to take me to a screen where I can now download Google Services Info plist. 
and I'm gonna open that up in download and you can see in this one I've got this one appended because I must have had one sitting in the download folder already I always seem to so I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm just gonna take out the one the parentheses and any extra space so my naming convention is correct drag that over here inside runner drop it click finish and with that we should be all set to actually run the application so you can run it on Android or iOS at this point I'm gonna run it on iOS since that's the emulator I have open And there we go, I've got it on an SC, so the screen is kind of small, but this is our landing page with the option to sign in with email, phone, Google, Facebook, or Apple. If you are on the Android, this is configured to only show sign in with Apple on iOS, so this button will not be there, so don't worry about that. Uh, we've got a button to go to sign up, so you can also sign up with email, phone, Google, Facebook, Apple uh, as well. So none of this is really hooked up yet, so that's what we're going to do in the next one. We will uh, enable the sign-in or sign-up with email. We'll visit the service that we make to the Firestore Auth. And after we get that service set up, we'll start to look at the code that is responsible for state management, uh, for storing that information in a database, and persisting the user. So that's what's coming up uh, in this series. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you soon.